Okay, so in the last video, I showed you how to find the uh, solution to a differential equation when the differential equation was a very was quite simple. So, for example, we looked at dy by dx equals three, and we can find the antiderivative of that to find it what the solution y equals would be, um, and then we can find particular solutions through certain points. But what we want to look at now is how to find solutions to differential equations when the antiderivative isn't quite so easy to see. So for example, if we've got dy by dx equals 3x squared times e to the power of negative y, this is a tricky um, thing to get the antiderivative of because it has both x's and y's in it, okay? So I'm gonna show you a strategy, it's called separation of variables, that will allow you to find the general solution to um, a differential equation like this. And once you find the general solution, then you're gonna use a similar strategy to what we used before to be able to find particular solutions through certain points. But before we do that, I do wanna go over a few things with you just to kind of recap um, a few things that will come in handy as you're working on these types of problems. So, at the beginning of this unit, I had you do a review of working with exponential functions and uh, exponents and logarithmic expression or functions and logarithms. And there's a couple things that I did that for a reason because those types of um, those types of calculations will be handy to have in mind as you're completing as you're doing the strategy for solving differential equations. So I want to first of all just review just a couple key things to remember. It's really important, as I've stressed before, that it's that you can find or that you can convert between exponential and logarithmic form. So if I have log base b y equals x, and if I want to convert that into exponential form, I know that my base is b, my exponent is equal to x, and the value of that power is going to be equal to my y. So that conversion is really important to keep in mind. Uh, if I extend that into the natural logarithm, ln y equals x, well, I know here ln just means that the base is e, so I've got my base e, I've got my exponent equal to x, and I know that my value of that is equal to y. So that's the first thing. The second thing that will come up a lot in these types of differential equations are um, exponent laws. And again, I know you guys know this, but just to kind of put this to the front of your mind and keep it, keep it, uh, keep it there, um, if you have e to the power of um, x plus 2, remember that using exponent laws, you can almost go in reverse, and I can say, okay, that's equal to e to the power of x times e to the power of 2. Because I know if I have two things with the same base that are being multiplied, I add their exponents if I want to simplify them. So this is just kind of going in the reverse direction. Okay? And then the last thing is I just want to make sure, oops, that you remember, because there's gonna we're gonna be um, do, working with some expressions that involve ln. So just remembering that ln x equals three is means the same thing as base e to the power of three is equal to x. We'll be doing those types of conversions throughout uh, the next couple days when we're working with a strategy. Okay, so keeping that in mind. Um, the second thing I wanted to just to kind of show you before we jump into a, um, solving that differential equation that I just showed you is a strategy um, is the strategy of actually separating the variables. So again, starting with the notation, and the notation sometimes looks a bit confusing, but I'll show you what it means, um, and hopefully it will all make sense. So when you're finding solutions to differential equations, you can use a strategy called separation of variables. So Basically, um, some of the equations that we'll be looking at will be in the form mx plus ny dy by dx equals zero. And if it's written in this case, and again, I'll show you an example in a minute to make this make sense, what you want to do is you want to separate the variables so that you collect all of the x terms to one side with the dx, and you collect all the y terms to the other side with a dy, okay? So to show you what I mean by this, I have a few examples to go through. Okay, so for example, here I have a differential equation, um, x squared plus 3y dy by dx equals zero. So what I wanna do is, so this is pretty complicated because it's got both x's and y's in it. What I wanna do is I wanna separate the variables so I get all of the x's to one side and the y's to the other side. So I'm going to take this x squared and I'm going to bring it over to the other side. And that leaves me with 3y dy by dx 
equals negative x squared. So I'm pretty close. I've got my y's over here. I've got my x over here. Now I just want to bring that dx over to this side. So this becomes dy, sorry, 3y dy equals negative x squared dx. So we've rearranged this. We separated the variables so that we've got the y's on one side. We've got the x's on the other. Okay. So a couple more examples of how to do that, and then we'll use this strategy to help us find some antiderivatives. Um, next one, I'm going to start with sine x y prime equals cos x. And I see my y prime here, and my instinct is to rewrite my y prime as dy by dx, um, because I want my dy by dx's in my, uh, on my two sides when I separate the variables. So I'm going to rewrite that as dy by dx. And then notice here, this is a y, this is a sine x. I don't want that sine x here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by sine x. So when I do that, I've got dy over dx, or dy by dx, is equal to cos x sine x. Okay? And I still have an x on this side, so I want to bring it over here. So now I have dy by dx, or sorry, dy by itself. And then I know that uh, cos x over sine x is equal to cotan x. So I'm going to simplify that to cotan x, and then I've got that dx. So 1 dy is equal to cotan x dx. Okay. And one more, just for the heck of it. This one might look a little bit more complicated. So here I've got uh, xy prime over e to the power of y plus 1 equals 2. So I'm first of all just going to get rid of that fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by ey plus 1. So I get xy prime equals 2 times ey plus 1. And I know I want things in terms of dy's and dx's, so I'm going to rewrite my y prime as dy by dx. And then from there, actually we're getting pretty close. Um, I've got x's over here and x over here, a y here and a y here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, actually there's a couple different ways that you could do it. What I could do is I could divide both sides by, uh, what do I want to do? I'm going to ignore this right here. I'm going to get my y's onto this side, and I'm going to get my x's onto this side. Okay? So I don't want this x here. I want it over onto this side. So I'm going to divide both sides by x. So that leaves me with a 1 over x here. And I can bring then up my dx so that it's with my 1 over x. And then over here, the 2's fine where it is, or I could just divide everything by 2ey plus 1. Um, so I've got 1 over 2ey plus 1, and then I still have my dy. So I've taken these two, I've taken these two sides. I've got the x's on one side, 1 over x dx. I've got my y's on the other side, 1 over 2 times ey plus 1 dy. And now I've separated up the variables. Okay, so that's a skill that we're going to be using as we work on these questions. Um, and then again, keeping in mind some of those uh, rules with logarithms and exponents and converting between those two forms that we've used through the last couple, couple uh, courses. Okay, so here we go. We are going to take the differential equation dy by dx equals 3x squared e to the negative y. And we are going to find, first of all, the general solution to it, and we're going to find the particular solution through the point 0, 1, or y0 equals 1. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take this expression, and I want to separate the variables, get them on there, get them by themselves. Okay? So I know that dy by dx equals 3x squared times e to the negative y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the y's over to this side, and I'm going to get the x's over to this side. So I'm going to divide this side by e... Um, to the negative y, and if I do it to this side, I'm going to do it to this side too. And then I'm going to times both sides by dx, so I get the dx over onto this side. So when I do that, um, I get dy over e to the negative y on this side, and then these two e to the negative y's are going to cancel out. So I'm left with 3x squared dx on the right, and because this is a negative exponent, I can pop it up make a positive, and I get e to the power of y dy on the left. Okay? So I've taken something that had x's and y's on both sides, or sorry, on one side, and I've separated it up so I have all the y's on one side and all the x's on the other side. 
from there, um, now that I have all the y's together and all the x's together, now I can find the antiderivatives. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the indefinite integral, integrate both sides. So I'm going to integrate um, e to the power of y with respect to y, so e to the power of y dy. And then I'm going to take the integral of 3x squared with respect to x, so 3x squared dx. And then from there, I can find the antiderivatives that I've been looking for. So I know that the antiderivative of e to the power of y is e to the power of y plus c. So I've got that constant in there. I know that the antiderivative of 3x squared is x to the power of 3 plus c. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those plus c's and I'm just going to combine them together um, because they're both just constants. So if I combine them together, sometimes I put a little c, a c1 here just to um, show that it's kind of a new constant, but it really doesn't matter. Overall, um, I've got e to the power of y equals x to the power of 3 plus c. Okay? And then the last thing that I want to do, because I want it to be a solution, I want it in the form y equals, so I know what my solution is equal to. So what I want to do is I want to take these antiderivatives that I've calculated, and I want to isolate for y. Okay? Now here's where a little trick comes into play. I want to get the y by itself, and it's stuck up here in an exponent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, because this has a base of e, I'm going to take the ln of both sides. And I know from the exponent laws that if I take the ln of this side, um, that exponent is going to come down in front. Okay, And that will allow me to unlock it from the exponent and bring it out front so that I can then isolate for it. So I'm going to take the ln of this side, which is ln uh, e to the power of y. And if I do it to one side, I've got to do it to the other. So on the other side, I've got the ln of x to the power of 3 plus c. And when I bring my y down, I get y equals ln e equals ln x to the power of 3 plus c. And I know that ln e is equal to e to the power of what equals e? It's equal to 1. So 1 times y is y, and y equals ln times uh, x to the power, sorry, ln of x to the power of 3 plus 3 or plus c is going to be my general solution. Okay? So this is my general solution. And now what I can do. So actually, I'll just recap what I did there. So I have my differential equation. I separated up the variables. I integrated both sides so that I could find the antiderivatives. I combined my c's together. And then I rearranged it to get the y by itself. And this is where I had to use some of those exponent rules to, uh, to help me out. OK? And then once I have my general solution, all I have to do is plug in my point to figure out what my c value is. So I want to find the particular solution at the point 0, 1. So I know that y is equal to ln um, of the x to the power of 3 plus c is my general solution. So I'm going to sub in 1 for y. I'm going to sub in 0 for x. So I get 1 is equal to ln c. Well, if I convert that into exponential form, I know my base is going to be e. My exponent is going to be 1. And my value is going to be equal to c e to the power of 1 is equal to c. So for the particular solution through the point 0, 1 is going to be y equals ln x to the power of 3 plus e. So once you've found your general solution, then you can just plug in your points, rearrange your equations, and solve for c's. And you can see, again, this is where some of those um, this is why, I, again, why I uh, reviewed some of those exponent and logarithm rules, because they come into play when we're trying to rearrange to get the c by itself as well. Okay, and then here's a vi here's a visual of what we just found. Okay, so I just pulled up the Desmos uh, slope field generator, and I have I got dy by dx by itself. So here's our differential equation that we started with. So here's the slope field that uh, models that or visualize, gives us a visual of what that looks like. I plot it on the point 0, 1. So you can see the point 0, 1. And then the solution that I found uh, was y equals ln. This is a specific solution, y equals ln of x to the power of 3 plus e. I plotted that on in red. And you can see how that goes right through the point 0, 1. And that follows the flow of all of those little tangents to show me what that curve is going to look like. Okay, So this is a particular solution through the point 0, 1 for this differential equation.
visualize what we are doing. Okay, so just to recap then, um, basically four steps every time we do this. Number one, we're gonna separate the variables. Number two, we're gonna integrate both sides. Number three, we're gonna get y by itself. And then if it asks us for a particular um, solution, we're gonna plug in the point and figure out what our C value is to get our particular solution. So what I would like you guys to do now, um, I'm gonna give you another one to try on your own. So I've got uh, y squared dy by dx equals x. So this is differential equation. Again, not a simple one because I've got both x's and y's in it, which makes it a little bit trickier to find the antiderivatives. What I would like you to do is to use the um, strategy of separation of variables and see if you can find the particular solution through the point zero, 01. Again, press pause, try it on your own first, and then I will show you my solution. Okay, so here goes. Here's our original differential equation. We want to find the particular point through, or particular solution through zero, 01. So the first thing I'm going to do is separate the variables. I just this one's easy to separate the variables. I just brought the dx up here, and now I've got all the y's on the one side, and I've got all the x's on the other side. Second step, integrate both sides. So I've got um, the integral, sorry, I wanna find the antiderivative or the definite, indefinite integral of uh, y squared dy over here, which is y cubed over three plus c. And then I wanna find the antiderivative of x or the indefinite integral of x dx. And I know that that's equal to um, x squared over two plus c. Um, from there, I'm just gonna combine my c's together and I'm just gonna label that c1 because it's a new c, although it really doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna get y by itself. So to get y by itself, I'm gonna multiply everything by three. So I'm gonna multiply this by three. I multiplied by c by three as well, but again, because we didn't know what c was, that doesn't really matter too much. So I just called that c2, but it's just c. Um, and then to get the y by itself, I, um, I wanna get rid of the cubed. So I cubed root both sides. So I've got y is equal to the cubed root of three over two x squared plus four of two. So again, there's my general solution. It's got the C value in it. If I wanna find a particular solution, I'm gonna sub in my points for x and y and then rearrange the equation to isolate for C to figure out what that C value would be for that particular point. So I'm gonna put in y equals one. I'm gonna put in x equals zero. I end up with one equals uh, the cubed root of my C value. I wanna get rid of the cubed root, so I cube both sides, one cubed remains one, so I know that my C value is equal to one. So for this particular, um, this particular uh, differential, or differential equation, this is the general solution here, and if I wanna find the particular solution through zero, one, I know that the constant value would have to be one. So I get the cubed root of three over two x squared plus one. And again, there's a couple different ways you could express that. Um, but in general, that's what it should be. And again, if I want to visualize what that looks like, it's really important that you understand what you're finding when you're doing this. So I, again, I just used the um, slope field generator on Desmos. So I took the equation I isolated for dy by dx. So I get x over y squared. So this is what the slope field looks like. These are all the general solutions. And then I took um, the specific point, zero, 01, I plotted it on there. And if you follow all of those tangent lines, follow the curve to get your particular solution, um, it does match up nicely with what I found to be y equals um, the cube root of 3 over 2x squared plus 1 as my particular solution. So you can see what we found there. Okay. There we go. So hopefully that gives you a start 